So, we all know that the results of clinical trials are not always the same in our real life situations. And similarly, the follow up intervals and the cost as well. So, Dr. Fisher, can you tell us your experience with different ILEA regimens? Hello, I'm. No, no, sorry. Um, I come from a country. Uh, Okay, uh, where we perform the view study and I know the perfect results, the perfect diagrams, but uh, due to some pharmaceutical politics, uh, this treatment is not available for all patients. We have 14 centers in our country which reimburse, uh, who, who get the reimbursement from the insurance companies. So the patients often seek for help in private clinics, but here the therapy is not reimbursed. And due to the high costs, uh, on the demand of the patients themselves, we use modified treatment regimen. Uh, just to mention that the price of ILEA is twice uh, as much as the monthly income of elderly people. So uh, the purpose of this study was to compare different regimens of ILEA in patients with AMD. Uh, originally heterogeneous group was clean, so we gained 196 eyes of 187 patients whom we treated within three years with aflibercept. Mean age was 77, we evaluated vision and OCT in different treatment regimens. First, uh, PRN, including patients who switched from Avastin and also those without an Avastin history. Then uh, the loading dose, uh, th the third group was treat and extend, I mean uh, in a another scheme than Shengul mentioned, just three injections and then PRN, and then the full by a recommended scheme, it means loading dose and then three injections uh, by monthly till the end of the first year. This is the table of the patients, and um, the mean number of injections was 3.3 and the median was 3. Of course, in the PRN regimen, it was the least, it was 2.7 injections. Of course, it was three injections in, in the loading dose regimen. It was 4.6 in the regimen treat and extent and uh, six injections in the buyer scheme. In reality, they were more, there were seven, of course, but when I was sending this abstract, the calculations were not available. The results were very different from the VIEW study, but this is generally true for all pharmaceutical studies. Everybody who performs pharmaceutical studies knows how the patients are um, uh, included and excluded especially. So we treat an average population, not exclusively the elected patients as during the studies. So this, this was the, so this was the, uh, sorry for the conversion from PowerPoint to Keynote. So, but, but it's illustrative even more. <laughs> you can see a mess uh, of uh, the visual acuity and only on the OCT we can find uh, improvement. Anatomic improvement was clear. So I will show you some some patients, this was the, pa the first patient in our country who received ILEA. So he, uh, before that, he received 16 Avastins, and after 14th ILEA, he behaved the same way as Shengul mentioned. After the first month, he was always dry, and after the second month, he uh, had the recurrence of exudation, so he needs uh, to continue in the therapy. So he's still active, but uh, his vision keeps 0.6, that's excellent, and he keeps on getting ILEA. And uh, this patient had a horrible PED, starting with vision 0.16, and we planned to give him uh, seven injections of ILEA. He could afford that financially. After the third, third ILEA, he had vision 0.6, and he could read the agar number three, if only we stopped at that moment, because after the fourth injection, he had the pigment epithelium rip, and he lost uh, the ability to read but still he uh, continued with the injections. Another patient like this, vision only 0 0.5, 0 0.05, and uh, he dried up and uh, gained uh, vision 0 0.16, but unfortunately later on he developed atrophy and his vision is only counting fingers. Another patient with minimally classic collision successfully dried up, but developed a fibrous scar uh, another patient who looked like a myop, but he had no myopia at all, 
uh, he had uh, uh, in the right eye first the lesion with 0.3 vision and the left eye was healthy in that at that time uh, so he gained um, avastins and six ileas and he uh, f developed fibrosis with remaining exudation and dropped down to 0.16 but unfortunately he developed the lesion in the second eye as well and uh, we treated him with ILEA. He received seven injections, and immediately after the se seventh injection, he um, suffered from this horrible subretinal bleeding. Uh, so after six ILEA in the right eye and seven injections in the left eye, he has vision 0.16 and counting fingers, which is very poor. So if we uh, see the mean effect of the treatment, the visual acuity uh, improved a little bit after six months, but after 12 months, uh, the improvement is not significant, statistically significant. The OCT finding improved. So we said, okay, uh, some of these, uh, let's, let's compare the groups uh, and let's, let's uh, preclude or ex expect that the patients who got the full regime of treatment uh, were the best. But here you can see that uh, the patients, that it was just the opposite. The patients who, who, got, who received the three injections had the best visual acuity at the end. And um, the OCT also did not respond to our expectations. So we said, okay. Uh, first, uh, of course, the patients who have better b vision at baseline must have the greatest improvement, but this also did not prove to be right. Uh, you can see that the patients with the worst vision, uh, worse than 0.1, had the improvement while the other groups uh, a little bit worsened. So uh, on, on the OCT it was like that. So here we can see, uh, we can see nothing in fact. The same as here. So after ILA injections, the best visual acuity only stabilized with no statistically significant improvement, but the central retina thickness improved. So, and uh, moreover, there was no significant difference in uh, improvement of, uh, of, of best, best visual acuity or central retina thickness in the beginning at the baseline between different injection regimens. So my question is, what is the cost of one letter gain? <laughs> so Dr. Fisher, can you please tell me what's exactly your favorite treatment method in real life situation? I think this uh, presentation is showing that it is very difficult to say. Uh, based on our 11 years experience with Avastin, which was unfortunately, uh, which became illegal in our country last year, and according to the EVRS experience with tailored therapy, uh, I, I showed that all treatment regimens in our group of patients were comparable. Therefore, even with ILEA, we treat our patients individually, mainly individually, since 2013. There's no need to hide this, that the financial concern of the patients played a role in this study, and this influenced the statistics. Uh, of course, the poor patients, I mean patients not having enough money, uh, had, had a ten tendency to postpone the injections, and also patients who did not feel the improvement after the first injection or injections had the tendency to withdraw from further treatment. And also some of the patients had very pronounced finding and they were treated just as salvage therapy at their own request, and we had no high hopes in these cases. And other patients withdrew from the treatment, and this all adversely influenced the results. So the conclusion I can say from this experience is that ILEA and all other anti-VGFs uh, prevent from blindness. However, pharmacological study is definitely not the same as real world practice, as you can see on these last two slides. That's all. Oh, thank you. So may I ask a quick question to the audience? Can you please raise your hand if you agree with Dr. Fisher that the results of real, real life situation are totally different from the results in the pharmacological study? We all agree with you. <laughs> yes, please. Just one comment. Uh, in real life, in, you know, patients cannot come because of some health problems or some family problems uh, regularly. Uh, that's one of the reasons for that. And 
Uh, another reason, the patients are all selected for many uh, criteria, to fit many criteria, but we have, you know, we can't select the patients, we have to treat all of them. And um, uh, what I see, uh, in what I do in my cases, if they are coming from a long distance, I usually prefer, for example, treat and extern regime, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, when, when they are away from the hospital a long distance, it's difficult for them to come back again when they feel the signs of exudation. Then I treat them before they um, start exudation. And I try to decrease the number of visits for them rather than decreasing the number of injections. So you have to arrange your uh, treatment regime according to the conditions of the patients also. I have a comment. Yes, one yes. comment quickly, I think, please. I think uh, we already experienced more than 10 years of very successful uh, anti-VGF treatment of AMD. And I think this is a time uh, not to talk about the regimes and uh, the positive effects, but also about the side effects. And actually with uh, OCT NGO, we can, we can do it very easily in our days. And I think next next during the next uh, congress we have to also to mention how this multiple injection influence on the narrowing of the normal uh, vessels on the progression of the atrophy because we all know that all anti vj obtain apoptotic antiproliferative action so this is time to start about uh, to start to talk about the side effects and uh, knowing these two positive effects and side effects knowing these two uh, uh, Things find a new equilibrium for the for the regimes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you that prolonged anti-VGF inhibition by using anti-VGF injection definitely has side effects, as we all expect on the long term. So the next presentation is quite interesting. It's about the use of radiation for wet macular degeneration. As you know, there are different methods for delivering irradiation to wet AMD, either by brachytherapy or stereotactic therapy. Dr. Andrea, can you please tell us your technique for irradiation? Dear Chairman, dear colleagues, our project is based upon theoretical and experimental results of Professor Leonid Lindnik, Filatov's Eye Institute, Odessa. Using the experimental model on rabbits and monkeys, he had found significant somatic response of low energy light irradiation on both eye tissue and immune system. He had used modulated pulses of coherent and non-coherent monochromatic lights. The main purpose of our study was evaluation of efficacy of a new approach to stabilize the duration of state of the retina and visual function in patients with wet AMD who had already completed initial course of anti-VGF therapy. In our study, we have used spectral light device, which was m developed and manufactured by Vision Aid Incorporation, Winnipeg, Canada. The device is currently using for purposes of low energy light irradiation of eye of patient with dry AMD. For the patient with dry AMD, the low energy light therapy results in improvement of patient's visual function and increasing of macular pigment optical density. 103 patients with exudative AMD were included in the study after performing a few injections of anti-VGF. We have included patients without any OCT detected signs of exudation after completion of anti-VGF therapy. The patients were divided into two groups, test and control. During one year of study, the test group, 69 eyes of 62 patients, received two, oh, yeah, yeah, two sessions, <laughs> thank you, of low energy light therapy. The first session of therapy had been performed not earlier than one and a half months after the last anti -VGF uh, injection. The second treatment session has been, has been performed six months after the third session. Irradiation uh, has been performed uh, uh, by serious non-coherent 
monochromatic lights, uh, pulses with red, green, and infrared wavelengths, and, and estimated power density on the surface of cornea, 6.3 microwatts per square centimeter. One treatment session consists of uh, 10 procedures during five days. The control group or patient with wet AMD did not take any specific therapy after completion of initial anti-VGF therapy during one year of study. Measurement of visual acuity value for both groups of patients has been performed by means ETDRS charts. Uh, OCT scanning was performed by means of Cirrus HD OCT model 5000 in the beginning of the study at 6 and 12 months. Results. For the test group of patients, the stabilizing visual acuity uh, was found during one year of, after treatment. At the beginning of the study, the average value of vision of, was 30 letters. At the end of the study, the same value was 32 letters. The difference of value is not statistically significant. For the patient of control group who did not take any treatment, we found decreasing of visual acuity. In the beginning of the study, the average value of visual acuity was 35 letters. At the end of the study, the same value was 23 letters. The difference in statistics is statistically significant and equal to 12.41 letters of the chart. Uh, according to the OCT data, the following changes was observed in the test group. The retina sickness in uh, forward decreased during one year of treatment. At the beginning of the study, the average value uh, of foveal thickness was 304 microns. In the six months, the same value was 284 microns. In the 12 months, 259 microns. Uh, in the patient of control group, we observed increasing of retinal thickness in fova from 279 microns uh, to 392 microns at the end of the study. In the test group of patients, the subretinal neuroscopic membrane increased in 11.59% to uh, during uh, six months uh, and 15% uh, during six and 12 months respectively. But for control group, the same parameter increased on 36 and 47%. Significant difference between two groups was found for neuroepithelium changes. After completion of low energy light therapy, the cyst of neuroepithelium has been quickly regressed. In six months of observation, the cyst of neuroepithelium was found in 13% in test groups and 47% uh, in control group. Uh, uh, in uh, 12 months of observation, the same parameter was found in 16% uh, in the test group and 65% uh, in control group. Conclusion. Performing a low energy light therapy for patients with wet IMD after injection of anti-VGF treatment resulted in stabilizing of visual acuity. In addition, uh, the therapy is effective to at least delay the development of retinal changes. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Andrea, let me confirm. Do you use this uh, radiation alone or with anti-VGF uh, or either? Uh, we, uh, uh, in the year of study, we use this radiation alone. Uh, the, the first session of radiation was one and a half months after the last anti-VGF injection. Okay. And what is the exact mechanism of radiation, do you think? Uh, this method is new and now we... Uh, we possess only hypothetical interpretation. 
We think that this method activated the endogenic mechanism of increasing uh, lutein in zeaxanthin in macular region. The evidence is that after course, uh, uh, patient with white AMD increasing uh, macular pigment optical density. Okay, thank you. So then we'll move to the next speaker. Sorry for the sake of the time. So as you all recall the old story of the Avastin versus Lucentis, where Lucentis was promoted by the company and there was an off-label use of intravitreal uh, Avastin. Recently, we have the same story with Aflibercept and also Zef Aflibercept. Dr. Stewart, can you tell us about your early experience? 